morning, church. Lord, we just welcome your presence in this place. Congregation, won't you stand and welcome Jesus? Lord, we thank you for your presence, Lord God, in every part of our life, Lord God, in every valley, in every mountaintop, Lord, with every um, thing that's positive and everything that's a struggle, Lord. We just give you glory in it all, Lord, because, Father, we want to walk with you. And so, Lord, come into this place. Come into our homes, Lord Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Looking up, fixing my eyes on you, not turning around anymore, just straight ahead. I want your will, choosing your way, your Lord, not waiting around anymore. I will arrive.
everything this morning, Lord God. We give you all glory and honor and praise, Lord Jesus. You are welcome in this place, Lord God. Good morning, LGT family and friends. Today's reading comes to us from Ephesians 4, verses 29 to 32. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Well, good morning, friends, and we are just so happy to be able to join in faith together and to worship the Lord. I trust you're blessed these days. I want to talk to you about two words we see. Two words. You'll likely know both of them. Likely know what they both mean. The first is hope, and the second is hopeless. Hope and hopeless. And when I think of hope, immediately in my mind comes back a chorus we sang for years. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Hope built on Jesus. But hopelessness we see all around us in these days. We see it where you have such conflicts going on. And I just say, as Christians, we can say it's Christ who is the solid rock and we stand on him. And another ground is sinking sand. Well, right now we have a choice. Do we go and stand on sinking sand or do we place our hope on Jesus and all that he's done for us? I trust that you've filled your heart with hope. Hope. You don't want to fill your heart just with hope of things you have, like the house you live in or the vehicle you have or the clothes you wear or the size of your bank account. You want your heart to be based on a hope in Jesus and what he's done for you. And you see such fighting going on. You saw the restaurant down in the States and it was wild what had happened. Two guys walked in together at the same time. And the first one ordered, I will have a beef steak, only I want it really well done. The second one ordered, I will have a beef steak, but I want mine really, really not done well. Then they went and sat down and they got the guy the beef steak that wasn't done well first. And the other guy got fuming mad. Why did you bring him his first and not me? And the next thing you know, you saw them fighting and the whole restaurant was fighting with each other, throwing chairs at each other and all this stuff. Now the answer at the end was, the reason that the beef steak that was well done and the beef steak not so well done, the not so well done came first because it didn't take as long to cook it. But the people were fighting over it, fighting in a wild fight. Well, sometimes people get really mad about things these days. They get fighting verbally and physically and oh you see it all around us and sometimes what we want to do is base our life on something totally different than that we want to base our life on jesus because he forgives us of our sins we hope our faith is in jesus in God, the Son of God, Jesus, who went to the cross and shed his blood and died on the cross for you and me. He died for us. Now he's got a plan that's prepared for us. He went to heaven to prepare a place for us. So if you come along in life and you say, I just need to base my life 
on Jesus. You invite him into your heart. You ask him to forgive you of your sins. You invite him to be your savior. And you welcome the Holy Spirit to guide and direct your path in life and fill your heart with faith. And you receive the directions that the Lord would give you. And you receive peace from God. Interesting that in these tough, difficult days, you can still walk through them and have peace that comes from God in your heart. You can know what God wants you to do and he can empower you to do it. And you become a new person in Christ Jesus. The old life passes away and the old things become new and you view things differently. I can't imagine going in a restaurant and have guys fighting over who got served first. Fighting over who got their beef steak first. That doesn't become an issue to fight over. And if I want to become a new creation in Christ Jesus, I want God to open my eyes so that I see things the way he sees them. And I want the Holy Spirit to give me ears that hear things the way God wants me to hear so I can communicate and listen to what God has for me in this life. Don't get all distracted by the things around us. It seems like in Canada now, there's starting to break out a bunch of fights. Sad when it happens. Sad when it happens. I want my faith to be built in my heart in a hope on God when I look at God I don't look just based on what I have in this life <laughs> I look at what he has for me in eternity I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you can be also well that place is in heaven and he's got something really nice for me, different than going to the Gold Corral restaurant, going to heaven to be with Jesus, going to heaven to worship God. I've often thought, how will I get to worship God in heaven? I'll get to praise him and worship him, raise my hands. I'll go to heaven and I'll see what really matters to me for all eternity. It'll be very different than what I eat here on earth, whether I eat a well-done steak or I eat a medium rare steak or however I eat, whatever I have, he'll prepare a place for me and he'll have food for me in heaven. I thank the Lord Jesus for what he does and I welcome him into my life. And I know that I have failed and sinned in my life and I look back on the failures in my life and I ask for forgiveness. And God forgives me. He restores me. He wants me to be with him in heaven. Do you know God wants you to be with him in heaven? He wants you. He wants you enough that he gave his son to die on the cross so your sins can be forgiven. He wants you to enough that he gave his son to come and live here on earth. And he was despised and rejected by so many people. But he came because he loves you. You. He doesn't love you because you're perfect. But if you come to him and ask Jesus into your heart, ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, ask him to strengthen you in the life that you live, that's what God wants you to be, a born-again, new, transformed Christian person, living a life filled with faith and hope, joy and peace that come from God. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you can do it now. Sometimes at this difficult moments where people are in stress over what's going on all around us. 
Sometimes they realize what I need is God's help. What I need is God's provision. What I need is God's grace for me. And you invite Jesus into your heart to be your savior and you'll be a transformed person. God will have different things for you to do in life. He'll tell you who to share your faith or your testimony about what God did for you, who to share it with. You'll go to a, a place of worship and you'll raise your hands to God. And as you do, you'll worship him and you'll praise him. And there'll be a river of life flow into your heart. You'll find God directing your path, showing you what he has for you to do. Has God shown you anything he wants you to do? Have you done it? It's one thing for God to show you what he wants you to do. It's another thing for you to take a step of faith and do what he wants you to do. He wants us not to just know it. He wants us to do it. He wants us to move forward in faith and to share our love and to share our faith and to share our testimony with the people around us who don't know Jesus. Go and share with people so they too can come to the place where they say yes to Jesus. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Change my life. Transformed me. Make me a new creation in Christ Jesus. He'll do that for you. You ask him. He'll transform you. And then you'll see your life very differently. I don't look at the life that I have in terms of what God has for me, just as to what I have here on earth. I look at the life that he has for me in heaven. It's going to be wonderful. It'll be great to be in the presence of God with the peace of God and others of faith who come together and join and worship God. It'll be amazing. Just be ready for the day that he wants to take you to heaven so that you're ready to go to be with him. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you this morning in the name of your son, Jesus. How thankful we are. How thankful we are that Jesus came and lived a life here on earth. And he died on the cross so I can be forgiven of my sins. Lord, you love me even though I'm not perfect. You love me. And Jesus died for me. And one day, Lord, I look forward to when you take me home to heaven to be with you for all eternity. All eternity to have peace with you. Guide and direct me in this life. Show me what you want me to do and give me the strength to do it. And may I honor you through the things I do and who I show your love to and how I give to them. Help me to be a loving, giving, transformed person. In Jesus' precious name, I pray for the glory of God. Amen. God bless you, each one.